Okay, so greetings everybody. Uh, my name's Michael. Um, I'm slightly affected by jet lag at this point, having arrived two days ago, I think it is, from Australia. Um, so I've set myself uh, a low bar as far as achievement is concerned. I want to get through the presentation, not have too many micro-sleeps, and try to make sense, and not come off a too weird. So. So my presentation is on the managing thousands of DNS records in GitOps fashion using Ansible and NS1. Um, it's, given the other presentations I've seen, it's, it's back to basics. You know, DNS is, a, is a, u, a utility service that everyone takes for granted um, and nobody ever thinks of it. But when you're confronted with the need to uh, manage hundreds of records, it's, it's, it's a... It's a problem that has to be solved. Um, so <laughs> I thought to myself when I started the presentation preparing it to get some audience involvement, uh, you know, help me choose a subtitle, but uh, I realised that I have one, and that is to choose your profile picture carefully because uh, I'm just not sure why I did this. Anyway, here's <laughs> that's my, my profile picture. Um, so, about me, I'm Michael, I'm a senior software engineer, uh, information systems engineer with Red Hat DIS organization within the OS team. Um, I believe it was called OS so we could call our team the DOS team. Um, it was strategic. Uh, I've been with Red Hat in this role since 2012. Um, I'm a boomerang. I, I started my career in 2004 with Red Hat. Uh, global support services, departed in 2010 and returned, and that's the role I'm in, I'm in right now. Um, I'm part of a team that uh, contributed to this project and its success. Um, I'm grateful to them and my leadership team for allowing me to present today. So, I, I feel we have, a, you know, again, a, a back to basics uh, thing here, you know, the DNS, the, the complexity is, is, is not that high but managing it in a, in a GitOps fashion uh, was absolutely necessary for us. We had to modernize things. Um, so we use components Ansible, Ansible Automation Platform, uh, and GitLab. Uh, we use them to improve efficiency, uh, data consistency, and to solve an immediate problem. Um, yeah, so we've automated it. So we had humble beginnings uh, around about 2022, we were still using a, uh, an infrastructure of bind servers that were globally distributed that had its origin close to 20 years ago for Red Hat. And we had a you know, very, very simple, well, complex script, but uh, it, it was problematic, wouldn't scale. We couldn't handle the number of zones we had. Uh, so we decided to use NS1 as a, an external DNS provider, um, but we had some problems to solve, like challenges to get uh, zone records and data from bind format into NS1. Uh, <coughs> so we started off, we had 500 zones, thousands of resource records. Uh, we needed to solve that problem. So bind itself was doing great, but our old automated automation system wasn't. It just wouldn't scale. Uh, you know, it, it, was, it was becoming more and more of a problem every time we had a new zone added. Um, Red Hat, uh, throughout its life, has been through stages of acquisition, uh, and we created new products, new uh, zone records, and they all had to be managed some way. Um, yeah, so... Uh, we also had an issue, we've decided to go to NS1, but we had a massive amount of data to, to, to manage. Um, we didn't want to do it in, in the web UI because it would have just taken months and months and months. So, uh, we, and we wanted to automate it in a GitOps fashion, so that's what we, did, we decided to do. Um, so we, we had teamwork, we, we do things in a slightly agile way, uh, being an operations primarily team. Um, we made some planning, some decisions. We used Jira, you know, created a, a, a project, uh, divided the tasks up, the, the usual sort of stuff. Um, now, we had a, 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 an established pattern 
the, the, that is that we already do something like this already. Uh, we manage uh, hosts with Ansible. We use GitLab to, to host our projects and, and playbooks and inventories. Uh, we use automation, uh, Ansible automation platform for orchestration. And we tend to tie it all together with GitLab CICD. So it's, it's very similar to what I've seen with other people talking about it, but with uh, a little less complexity, I guess. Um, but the good thing is it's, it's very real, it's very practical. This is exactly what we're doing right now. Um, so yeah. So it was obvious what we were going to do. We needed some, we had set some parts to assemble it. Um, so NS1 itself, it's a, it's a, a large DNS uh, service provider. Um, they have an NS1 Ansible module already called NS1.NS1 and we, we made use of that. Uh, we had to write a couple of playbooks to use the role. Uh, we had to design or define an, an, an inventory in which we hosted our zones and, and records. Um, we had created a, GitLab, a couple of GitLab projects to host the playbooks and, and inventory. Uh, we used the Ansible automation platform to uh, host the projects, inventory templates, inventory templates and workflows so we could orchestrate things. Um, I hadn't seen in other presentations today anything much mentioned about automation, Ansible automation platform. I guess it's, it's not a thing. Uh, but we're, we're definitely using it in, in reality. Um, and again, another, another component we use is GitLab CICD. Uh, to deploy via the Ansible automation platform, work, platform workflow or trigger it. Uh, so the Ansible parts, the Ansible NS1 module, NS1.NS1, it's, it's on GitHub. Uh, people can contribute. I made a very small contribution a while ago to add CAA records. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool project. Um, we have the Ansible inventory that we uh, designed. We pretty much wrote the playbooks and then realized this is what the, in the form the inventory would, would, would be at. I'm not sure if, what anyone else does. But, uh, and it's, uh, it looks sort of odd. Um, so we, we, we do things a little differently. You know, people are used to uh, managing Ansible host inventory items and their genuine hosts, but we used it to iterate, iterate over a, a, just a gigantic list of zones and records. Um, it's slightly different and slightly odd uh, that we use, you know, zones are hosts um, uh, under a zones group. We have uh, records under a records group. Um, each record needs to be, uh, inventory item needs to be unique for Ansible to handle them. So we had to sort of slightly overcome that with, by making, uh, you know, composing a, a, a host record entry that is unique. Um, another thing we had to do because, you know, of course, Ansible is generally stateless. So we had to signal to the playbooks um, via the inventory the state, whether it be present or absent. See that it's present. It's pretty cool. Um, we also so we had to write some playbooks. They're uh, pretty basic. Um, they're just wrappers around the NS1 dot NS1 role. Um, so we created one 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 playbook for managing zones. One playbook for, for managing zone resources, which is the resource records, and then we used another playbook to run them both. Uh, it's a, so here's our uh, create zones task. It's, a, it's slightly different to what we actually have in the, in the, uh, in the uh, repository, the GitLab, GitLab repository, um, just so I could fit it on the slide. Um, so that's the create, the create zones task. It's, it just basically sets variables from, from the inventory. We have a configure records task, as I mentioned. Same thing, it just, just uh, sets up records via variables from the, the inventory. Um, and then we have the, 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 result, the uh, playbook that, that 
combines the two. And what we need basically is to ensure that the, the zones are created before the records. So we also have uh, Ansible automation uh, workflows and templates. Uh, so there are two projects we just to host the, uh, the playbooks, uh, synchronized from a GitLab repository. We also have a, another Ansible automation project that hosts the inventory of host names and records, synchronized again from the GitLab repository. Um, and then we have an Ansible template. Uh, it's just the one that, that basically runs the playbook uh, against the inventory. And there's a, a nice picture of our template. Nothing uh, exciting here. Uh, only that it's hosted in the zones and records project and our inventory is the managed zones inventory. Um, and we had to put it all together and orchestrate it with, a, with an Ansible automation platform workflow. Um, yeah, it does a project sync of the, the managed zones inventory. <laughs> yep, sorry. Um, so it does a, a project sync of the, the managed zones inventory to ensure we have a fresh copy of changes in the, from the GitLab repository. Um, it then runs the job template so the workflow uh, is nothing spectacular. Um, as you can see, it's a, it's a live system that I took the screenshot from. When you've had some failures, they were all human caused, which is good. And you know, Ansible automation platform and Ansible itself tends to fail nicely and gracefully and cleanly and verbosely. So we knew exactly why it failed uh, and fixed it. Um, we have a, an Ansible workflow visualizer that allows us to uh, make more complex uh, workflows. Um, and we have two nodes in that job template. Uh, sorry, two, two nodes in, the, in that workflow. One is the job template type. Uh, the other is the, to synchronize the, the uh, inventory. And this is basically what it looks like. This is super simple. Well, I've seen much more complex ones. Um, it's very flexible. Uh, so now we have another component which we had, had to put together, which is the GitLab projects and CICD. Uh, so we have uh, two GitLab repositories already mentioned, uh, because we had to use them in the, in the Ansible workflow, uh, Ansible automation workflow. Uh, the NS1 ops, it's where we store the playbooks. Uh, NS1 Managed Zones is where we uh, store the inventory of zones and records. Uh, each zone is an inventory file of its own. Um, and what we want with the CICD, that CICD comes into play, is we want to trigger the workflow whenever we make a change to the inventory. Um, so we, there you go. Here's a, a lovely picture of our GitLab repository. Uh, this is the NS1 Ops, which hosts the playbooks. Um, we've only made some changes, 36 changes since we did this, so I guess that's a success. And it's also typos everywhere. But, uh, I think that was mine. Um, and then the NS1 Managed Zone GitLab repository. Um, so far, when I took the screenshot, we've had you know, 1,000 commits or a bit more, um, and we've had over 500 merge requests that have been merged. So they all sort of pretty much represent changes to the zones we host. Um, so the GitLab CICD for managed zones. Uh, this, is, this is really simple stuff. I'm, I wasn't sure how deep I, I would go, and I should, probably shouldn't go too deeply. Um, but we enabled CICD for the project. Uh, we protected the main branch and added GitLab runners to uh, execute pre and deploy stages. Um, so again, um, we enabled CI/CD just in case someone wanted to do this sort of thing. Uh, we protected the main branch. Uh, basically, we didn't want anybody to uh, push and merge directly into into the main branch. Um, 
and the only people allowed to merge were maintainers, which were the, in this case, it's the owners of the project um, in GitLab. Um, we added a runner um, under CICD runners. We, so uh, we wanted a specific runner, and I don't recall exactly why. Um, I think it was to get uh, suitable Ansible modules onto it or something like that. Um, and I didn't, I didn't set up the GitLab runner. Uh, we have a team that looks after things. It's, it, it exists in some internal cloud. Um, I, should, I should learn about it. I think I'll plan to do that when I get home. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's the only useful thing is that it's tagged ALM, which, is, which means it's a, it's a shared runner, and we wanted to choose this one specifically for our purposes. So we have some uh, GitLab CI/CD recipes. Uh, yeah, so we have the GitLab CI.yaml. Uh, it's where we defined our pre-stage and deploy stages. Um, in pre, we, we just perform a, a basic YAML check at the moment uh, using Molecule. Um, so when a merge request is created, it's had you know, basic YAML syntax checks performed on the inventory itself. Um, <coughs> and then the deploy stage of the, the CI-CD configuration runs a GitLab runner script, which is just a simple shell script. Uh, and we select the, you know, the, the runner itself via the tag setting. Um, we had to think a little bit about how we wanted things to work as far as the in GitLab runner.sh. Um, we only wanted to trigger the Ansible automation platform workflow uh, with limits on the zones that had changed. Otherwise, we'd be just hammering the NS1 API for no good reason. Um, so the luxury is that relatively small changes are nice and quick because they, they're one or two API calls. We don't iterate over everything and just redo it. So how, here is our uh, GitLab CI.yaml. You can see we've got the, the stages pre and deploy that we, we want to run. Um, we've got a little bit of uh, preamble to uh, set up, the, I guess, the environment. Um, and this is where we want to perform a lint check. We run a YAML lint. We have plans to do more uh, uh, detailed checks as far as what we want the inventory to look like. We just haven't done that yet. Um, it seems that most people make errors with syntax rather than anything else with what we do. Um, and then we have the, the job deploy uh, stage where we can see it's got the GitLab runner.sh. And we want the, uh, Git dot, the, the job deploy to only happen in, in the main branch. And, and we want to make sure our lint check only happens in merge requests. And here's our GitLab runner, um, .sh. This is what we had to be, you know, do an ugly script. Um, I wanted to make it beautiful, we couldn't. Um, basically, what we, we try to detect what's changed in Git, uh, form something that can be used as a limit in calling the, the workflow. And this is where we, we launch the workflow, it just happens to be number 6688 and we apply our limits. Um, and we're missing something. Now we've got, we've got the inventory, we've got the, the playbooks, we've got the, the workflow, everything works. The trouble is we now need to construct an inventory. Um, and we started this project, there were 500 uh, separate zones in bind that we needed to, to create an inventory for each of those zones. It was thousands of lines of, of, of fairly simple DNS data. So what's missing, um, yeah, our, our zones and records are still in bind. We had a, a, a massive migration task to perform. Um, our, for example, our redhat.com zone is, has over 1,800 records in it. Um, that's both due to poor choices as far as how we create records in redhat.com but also because you know the size of the company, how long we've been around. 
Um, so manually creating things, even in the inventory, will take way too long. Uh, so I took it upon myself to write a, a really awful uh, shell script, something that would, that would ev only ever be used once and should possibly never see the light of day again. Um, and I, this is just a brief glimpse of it. I don't want anyone to ever see it again. It's truly awful. Um, colleagues, it is, yes, yes, it is truly horrible. Uh, a colleague at the time said, it's, you've written an, an artificial intelligence script. And I said, no, 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 this is, this, is, this is what I was doing as a student, <laughs> badly, <laughs> years ago. But anyway, it, it, what it did was it, it, it allowed us to uh, migrate into our GitLab-hosted inventory, you know, a hundred zones at a time. Uh, was, it, was, it, it improved efficiency, and it, it, it worked remarkably well, despite my embarrassment in showing it here. Um, so in, in practice, we've put everything together, um, and we ask people to uh, use it in a particular way just to ensure that uh, our CICD works consistently and, and reliably. It's a little cultivated, I guess. Um, there's always ways to improve it, and I've got a few things in mind. Um, so we, we basically we ask people to, to, to clone the, the managed zones repository, get into the, into the inventory, uh, create a new branch, uh, edit your file, make your changes, um, <coughs> then git commit uh, and a git push into the, into, the, into the branch. And that then, the way we have GitLab set up, it, it returns to us at, on the command line a, uh, a nice link to create a merge request. Uh, so once the merge request is created, people with uh, maintenance role uh, in GitLab can accept the merge request, and that's people like me. Um, it kicks off the, the, uh, the, the deploy stage, running the playbooks via the workflow with the limit. Um, the good thing is, you know, the Git runners report what's happened in, in GitLab. Uh, we can look at the, the Ansible automation platform workflow output to troubleshoot. Uh, so as I mentioned, at time of writing, we had, you know, more than 500 successful merge requests. It's, it's been, you know, pretty remarkable that it's relieved us a lot of a lot of drudgery and, uh, <laughs> and uh, manual labor. Um, and, it's, and of course, it's the benefits are of, that it's you know consistent and reliable. Um, a retrospective: what went well and what didn't. Um, we had we had very few teething problems. The only thing is that in Red Hat, we ha probably in many other companies, we have um, some zones that are just owned by teams, and they were used to uh, the old way we had we had done things, which was we hosted. Uh, Zone files in a bind zone files in a, uh, a Gitterlite repository with good old Git hooks to check that they had access to it, um, and it would only permit people to make to land changes in the in the repository if you uh, were a member of a, 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 a LDAP group, and there was fine con fine grained uh, in as much as you know, people who owned a zone could, could make a, a change and we wouldn't even ever get involved. Um, uh, now, we, we lost that fine-grained ability. We are now, as a, as a team, a gatekeeper to all of the DNS changes via these merge requests. Um, it's not something we're completely happy with. The, the teams that own the zones are, are now sort of quite well acquainted with the process and we don't have that many complaints with the stuff. It's always, you know, the machines are easy to deal with, the people are a little bit more difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, we have, we have teams and end users that can access the repository, make branches. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and, of course, we're gatekeepers. And the, most of the people who are gatekeepers are, in fact, DNS 
subject matter experts, so it's, it's quite good. We get to observe if there is a problem and we're the best position to fix it anyway. Um, so we've grown since we've moved to NS1. Uh, we had a lot of zones and records that were in other um, DNS platforms that were brought into the fold. So since we started doing this, our uh, inventory now numbers 926 separate zones. Um, and the number of records in those zones is over 5,000. And the, the, uh, the, the system has not had one hiccup. It just, it just works consistently, reliably. And the, the overheads, as far as for us as maintenance is concerned, is vastly reduced uh, compared to our old system where we were battling shell scripts that couldn't handle 500 zones. Typically, in the old days, we would make a change to a zone and it would take 10 minutes to get to all of the bind servers. And then there was a question of would they all be answering the same way? <laughs> That's how difficult the issue was. Uh, whereas now in NS1 and all of this, this sort of thing, it's, it's incredibly straightforward. Uh, there's only an, another issue we did encounter when I migrated the redhat.com zone which one, with 1,800 records in it. I had to create the inventory all at once. Um, and when I ran the, well, when, when our automation ran the CICD and triggered the workflow, it managed to run quickly enough as to exceed NS1's rate limits for API calls. Uh, it's only happened four times and it was me who did it and observed it. Um, it manifested as a really simple error. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's not been a huge issue. Uh, I've reported it to uh, GitHub as a, in the upstream project in ns1.ns1. Um, and I might one day have a go at fixing it myself. Um, they have ways to do it in Python, which is the back end for ns1.ns1. So another thing, we, we would like to figure out how to do fine-grained access so we don't have a role as a gatekeeper. Um, we've had colleagues who are quite familiar with GitLab um, suggesting that code owners might be a, a way of doing it. Um, I've investigated it to my satisfaction that it doesn't achieve what we want, which is you know, per file owners um, it allows per directory, from what I recall, but not per file. Um, uh, so my plan, I'm going to probably do something in the Git runner itself. So it's very much like what we used to do in our Git hooks. Uh, check that the person who is, has created the merge request uh, that we are merging has access to the uh, zone by ownership, by membership, by membership of a, an LDAP group. Um, and then if they, they, they are not permitted, then it'll just deny the creation of the merge request. Um, it's, you know, with me, uh, everything I do tends to be a little bit of a hack. Um, it brings me satisfaction when it, when it works. <laughs> That's good. Um, so another thing, we're, we're considering or thinking about and looking at other stuff. Um, so, you know, we work in DevOps, infrastructure management, automation, cloud operations. There's always something that does it more efficiently. Um, we, we chose a known pattern for a solution two years ago and made something in-house from ava you know, available components. We had a job to do, to do and we didn't really, at the time, consider exploring alternatives. We knew how we would do it, and so we just went ahead with that. Um, but we're, you know, I'm aware of Terraform, and I saw the presentation slightly earlier today about Terraform. And uh, Terraform has an NS1 provider and modules, and it looks rather good. Uh, one of the things is it's, it already m implements the rate limits uh, for API calls, which is pretty cool. So it's something I'm looking at, um, and it'll be an opportunity to, le to learn Terraform. Uh, we're pretty happy with our bespoke automations at the moment. It's trouble-free. 
So, yeah. I'm exceedingly pleased that I got through this without a microsleep, as being how, how tired I am, but uh, hey, I'm, I'm quite satisfied. So I can be contacted at mcurry at redhat.com. I've had that email address since 2004, so it's pretty, pretty long-lived. I maintain a very low-key social media presence. Um, I'm in the, in the nice old-fashioned Red Hat, uh, sorry, Fedora IRC channel in Eastern Australia time, uh, but I hardly ever interact because everybody's gone to Matrix or something, right? So, oh well. Anyway, so thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure if there are any questions, but uh, thank you.